Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I hope you enjoyed that beautiful video of Banky W featuring Adesua, a couple whose wedding actually took us out of Nigeria to South Africa to look at the tourism sites and a lot of their heritage locations. Now, today we'll be looking at Nigeria. What do we have here? What are our heritage sites? Can we really boast of having them? And how can they be maintained? Now, joining us to discuss this is a professor of anthropology, cultural anthropology, from the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology, University of Ibadan. And his name is Professor Aderemi Suleiman Ajala. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. A pleasure to have you here yeah, with us. Yeah, it's nice to be with you too. Good to have you. Yeah. So I, we just saw a video of um, Banki and Adesu. When they were okay. getting married, they went to South Africa. They okay. took loads of people. It was like a tourism boost for the South African yeah. government. Now, if they decided to do that in Nigeria, can they boast? Can we boast of having enough sites for them to have done their wedding as well? The yeah, way they, the way they, with the publicity that they gave mm, to it in South Africa. Yeah, certainly, 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 that can be done because actually, you see, Nigeria is a very rich cultural cultural site with a very marvelous uh, places of cultural aesthetics that can be developed to cultural heritage. All right, but that is not yet done. All right. Okay, I'm glad you've mentioned that Nigeria is rich in cultural very, very heritage rich. sites. Very, very rich. Last week we had a we had an artist as our guest here on the show. Yeah. And it spoke about the fact that when we have tourists, where we just delved a little bit into tourist attraction mm. in Nigeria, mm. they don't want to find out about your cinema halls. They don't care, not, they're not really interested with regards to your restaurant. It's nice, but we have international restaurants. They want to see your heritage sites, the culture of the people. Mm. Now, sir, could you tell us some of these areas in, in Nigeria, whether maintained or not mm. well maintained, but at least some of our heritage sites in Nigeria? Uh, certainly, I would just want to start by classification of heritage sites in Nigeria Beautiful. because if we do not do classification, we will not be able to locate where they are and then to be able to bring out the, 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 the understanding about them and then the value attached to them. Uh, yeah, firstly, you have uh, what we can call a traditional festival or local festivals. Like for instance, you talk about Agugu Festival, you talk about Doba Festival, you talk about Osho Festival, you know, or you talk about Ofala Festival in Indonesia. So, and that is festival. So we have a large number of them because most of these things are cultural productions. Cultural productions that can instill knowledge that have actually uh, linked with the people's identity that are of aesthetic value. After that, then you can also talk about monuments and, you know, historical places. Monuments are just uh, creatures of culture, like sculptures, you know, you know, figurines that have been made from the cultural perception of people. And then you talk about places. Places like palaces, beautiful palaces we have in Nigeria, like Alafioyo Palace or Neofife Palace. If you go there, you see the magnificent work of art, magnificent work of uh, culture. Then you talk about uh, the Sultanate, the Emirates palaces in the, in, the, in the north. Then again, you also talk about religious sites. We have a lot of religious sites. Of course, like when you talk about convenant churches and all these kind of uh, local uh, shrines, they are part of cultural heritage in Nigeria. Then again, you talk about uh, archaeological sites. You know, quite a number of archaeological sites have been discovered in Nigeria. Like you talk about Ubuku, you talk about Nok culture in the Plateau state. Then you talk about uh, Ueleru in Ondo state. Then you talk about uh, Subereru in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Ogo state, Ijebode. So these are uh, quite a number of them. Or you often talk about Odoyo National Park in, uh, in Oyo state. So several of them like that. These are archaeological sites. Then you still talk about historical monuments, which are of places that have been located and then they are of historical values, like Badagri, slave ports, and several others. So these are part of, or you also talk about natural, 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 natural sites, like forest, you know, natural forests, then rivers, and all these kind of things that have been created, that have been linked with cultural aesthetics and values. Of course, like Niger Delta Forest, Mango Forest, and all these kind of places. So they are of, I mean, heritage to Nigeria. Thank you for this classification and yeah. the breakdown. The truth is, prior to this conversation, when we think of our heritage and we're thinking of tourism, the first thing we all think of are places and fancy places, maybe like, um, we're not really thinking of festivals, for example. Yeah, so yeah. I haven't really, I hadn't before now paid attention to the fact that these festivals actually can attract the amount of yeah, tourism yeah, yeah, that yeah, we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that is not the case as much. We don't find that there are many people who fly in mm. because they want to be mm. there. Yes, there are a few festivals like the Calabar Carnival, yeah. for example, mm. that have successfully been able to attract yeah. international attention. Mm. But why is it that, let's even start from home, when people want to have a feel of something different, 
We don't find people saying, oh, I'm traveling to Ibadan to go and spend my holiday. Yeah. Or I'm traveling to Ondo. We hear people saying, oh, I'm saving up for summer. I'm going mm. to London. I'm going to America. They're going to different pla um, parts of the world, mm. Western countries. We don't see them making use of the tourism and the heritage sites that we have in Nigeria. Why is it that? Yeah. Why is that the case? <clears throat> yeah, there are, there are two or three problems. So two or three broader problems that are associated with that. One, that is the level of economy in Nigeria. But if you don't have money in your pocket, you don't travel out. Your money is first the first instrument that you have to use to, to travel out to anywhere in Nigeria here. In fact, even when you want to go from here, let's say we are in VI now, you want to go to, to, to Agege. If you don't have money to take you there, you can't go there. But some people so, will wait to travel abroad with this money rather than going to Yeah, Yeah, areas. those are the affluent that, that can actually buy it. Yeah? And most of these cultural heritage are not even meant only for the affluent. So, of course, you know, the percentage of affluent is very low. You know, compared to, you know, so but when you go to other climes like Germany, like uh, other countries of the world, you see a large number of people moving to those places because they can afford to go. So uh, the first reason is just the economic uh, problem. Well, if you do not, if you, are, if you don't receive your regular pay as a salary, you can't even say for, okay, you want to go for holiday or you want to go for, um, watch, uh, I mean, go for aesthetics. You know. Now, the second one is lack of cultural knowledge. You know, we have, we have, we have uh, actually thrown away our cultural knowledge. The cultural knowledge of Okwe, who, who, who am I? Yeah, what is my own identity? What is my culture look like? How can I actually share, you know, from what environment has provided for me? So we lack that basic knowledge, you know. Um, and, and of course, these are a function of our educational system. Because first and foremost, we are made to see what is European. We are made to know what is American. We are not made to know what is Igbo. We are not made to know much of what is Yoruba. We are not made to know what is what, what I mean, what much what is much of uh, houses and other ethnic groups in Nigeria. So that's the second one. Then the third problem, the third problem perhaps is just also that yeah, the government has not done enough, you know, to actually make people to be aware. What, what do I mean by that? When you look at Nigeria, of course, start from our money, the, the currency we use. How much of these traditional values, traditional monuments? And cultural heritage, do you see that are placed on them? Most of our fantastic buildings, you see foreign identity on them, not local identity. So, and that does not even inspire people. You say, yeah, if I see, uh, 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 when I see something that is local on, as a nas national symbol, I want to go and say, okay, what is the I naturality of there. this? I want to go there. I mean, out of the, what you've mentioned, all of them are very important. But one of the things I think a number of Nigerians have a problem with is an appreciation of our own history. Yeah. So we are very content with going to pursue and look at the mosques in Dubai, mm -hmm. look at Buckingham, yeah. Palace, Buckingham in London, Palace in London, go to you, you know, know America and visit yeah. the Empire State Building. Mm. But when you talk about going to see, I, it just struck me that I'll be going to probably Benin, and I'm not even thinking of going to visit the Obas Palace, because I'm thinking, why do I have to go there? Imagine. Is it interesting? Are there things? So now, there are two things I want to ask you. Number one, there's one thing with regards to interest of people to actually yeah. know their history and mm. appreciate, have an appreciation mm. of their own art and culture. Yeah. Mm. But it's another thing for, you mentioned one, the government, but also we know that there's a role that the private sector has to play. Sure. We keep talking about the government, and we know that in many areas people have said the government have failed in those mm. areas. They're still battling with security, mm. healthcare, education. Mm. So talking about cultural her heritage sites is probably at the bottom of the pile. What can pri the private sector do? to contribute to, the, to our cultural sites in Nigeria. We know in some countries, some universities take up these places and make it their project. If you go to Liverpool, for instance, yeah. um, Liverpool, the slave trade yeah. museum is, mm. is almost academic. Yeah. So we have people who come there and they've taken it upon themselves to actually mm. build that place. What are the things, you know, ideas for the private sector to actually, in, you know, in, 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 um, to invest in yeah. these areas so that Nigerians can also enjoy it as well? Yeah, first and foremost, the, the private sector should have to initiate uh, researches in uh, cultural institutions that, that are well endowed with, uh, you know, discoveries on uh, cultural heritage. Yes. You know, they have to really under, I mean, undertake uh, studies. So it's not well funded at yeah, the moment. Yeah, they have to, to, to properly fund the research yes. into those uh, uh, cultural heritage. So having funded it, they will be able to know, to, to, see, to get the locations and discover new ones. And then... Uh, promote the uh, cultural productions of this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, heritage. Then secondly, too, yeah, they have to adopt them. You know, most of these, uh, some of these, uh, uh, you know, quite, uh, uh, corporate uh, organizations, they have to adopt 
you know, they need to adopt some of these uh, cultural heritage uh, sites. For instance, like Oshun, Oshugo, uh, if you see maybe two, three, four, or five, uh, you know, public, uh, I mean, uh, private in, uh, corporations that can actually adopt them, you know. So, and then apart from that too, they also need to promote them by using those elements of cultural, I mean, of uh, all those uh, heritage as the symbol of their uh, corporations. Brilliant. You now, know, they have to use them just like that. For, for people to be interested in their culture and their heritage, I mm. believe that sometimes it doesn't start as an adult. For some people, yes, but we can incorporate it to them when they're young. We find that in our school curriculum, a lot yeah. of them, um, history isn't being taught as mm. much as it used to. When mm. I was much younger, history was a core course in some mm. schools. But as time went on, we found that they were taking history out of the curriculum. Mm. How important is it for our education system and for parents as well? you know, to be actively involved? How can they be involved in nurturing the next generation mm. with regards to making them fall in love with their culture and heritage? Yeah. I think the, the, this, the sad thing that has really happened to our educational, you know, educational system in Nigeria, which we are actually uh, feeling the pain now, is self-identity. Self-identity is not constructed in our education. Uh, and of course, that's become very imperative. And that goes in line with, you know, the, the school systems who have to introduce cultural history. Not just if you feel that yeah you don't want to learn about Mansa Musa you don't want to learn about the uh, the the whole aspect of history you know you can actually bring about cultural history cultural history is very very important I need to know uh, as much as you know I'm in Nigeria I need to know other ethnic groups where they are located what are their cultural values what are they, what are their cultural practices so these are very important so and the government of every state will have to introduce that and that is also what is really affecting our language system you know. The language system, many of us could not even speak our local languages anymore. And so we find it very difficult to understand each other. And that is even why you see a lot of violence on the street, because English has a limitation as far as African is concerned, because English cannot project my thought adequately as I wish, you know, because it's not my mother language. I was not born there. I'm not relating there. And of course, I relate with larger percentage of people who could not really understand English better than, you know, better than I do. So, and so, when to communicate to them is, is a big problem. So the same thing happens with our cultural heritage. If you want to actually promote this cultural heritage, we have to start from the, from the, from the cradle. Mm. That is perhaps from the elementary schools, not from primary school. I start infusing language. Yeah, you, you infuse language to them. You have to teach them about their cultural, cultural, cultural heritage. You have to teach them about the entire, entirety of cultural, cultural history. The Where you are coming that. from. Who are those? Which 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 of the ethnic groups are in Nigeria? Yes, you know. When uh, we were growing up, it was a big part of growing yeah, up. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like Olive mentioned, mm. we learned about this. Yeah. In schools today, because now there's more emphasis on private schools, yeah. and there's only an extent to which the government Ex has control over what is taught. So how can they then be almost pressured to doing it? Because in public schools, it can be enforced. The state government can say that you have to teach. But if you go to many private schools today, they are teaching their young children Mandarin. how to speak French, yes. how to speak Mandarin, that, that, that's how a, to speak that, that, Spanish. That's a big problem. I'm happy you, have, you, you struck that. That's a big problem for Nigeria, honestly. The private school and non-regulation non of what is done in private schools. Of course, no, no individual should initiate an educational program for itself. Yeah? It's the responsibility of the government. Mm -hmm. Governments should set the agenda for them. Yeah? They are just partnering with the government. Exactly. Private schools are partnering with the government. Governments should have to, to, to set the agenda. So if you now see government, I mean, private schools flouting the, the, the order of the government, that, that's a misnomer. Now, that's this a misnomer. is a big debate. That's, a, that's a misnomer. There's that's a so big many things that people can say that, well, Private school is primarily, it's a business. Yes, you want to educate the children, but you want to make, make profit. Mm. And profit is based on the law of demand and supply. Yeah. If the parents are not demanding for you to, if there's no demand for your children to know about their cultural heritage, they're not going to bother about it. So, so like you mentioned, it's going back again to saying that we have to have an, a sense of appreciation for our arts. Yeah. Whereby, if, because parents want their children to learn Mandarin. I mean, I, 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 you speak to certain parents and you're, you're hearing them say, oh, don't speak Igbo to her. She doesn't understand. Oh, don't speak Igbo to her. Yeah. Speak English to her. We find that parents are more interested in their mm. kids. My parents were guilty of that as well. The yeah. little I know about my language, I learned from my grandmother because I really wanted to learn yeah. my language. So this is a charge to you out there, not just to the teachers, not just to, to the government. There's so much we can do with regards to blaming the government and expecting the government to turn around our heritage sites and ensure that our culture has been appreciated. But you can't teach someone to you can teach someone to treat you by how you treat yourself. Mm. So we can teach others, investors, tourists from other countries to learn to love our languages, our culture, 
by us loving our culture. Mm. Teach your children how to speak their language. Yeah. Speak your language to them. Mm. It doesn't affect the quality of English that they speak, At all. as a lot of them mm. think. Mm. So very quickly before we let you go, if somebody who is watching this interview now decides, I want to know more about my culture, I want to know more about my country, about the diverse cultures in Nigeria, and I want to just, you know, I'm not traveling abroad this year, I want to visit different parts of Nigeria. Can no. you give examples of some tourist sites you think that people should be able to visit in Nigeria? Yeah, we have uh, Osho groups in Oshogo. Then we have uh, Doba during the festival. Yeah, Osho, Osho groups has a uh, two components. We have the festival that is done every every August. Then the the site is also there where you see a lot of figurines that are that are pl 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 placed there. So and that's everyday visit. You, know, you can just go there at any point in time. In Benin City, have, any nice place? Yeah, in Benin City, the palace is there, and then the 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 Benin the, the Benin bronze are also listed there. You have a Benin museums that you have a very large of large antiquities that are placed there. You also have very bad museums. You have a Lagos museum at Onika here that is where you see large. We have Ogoni Cave. You have uh, Badagri. That's a slave port. Yes, the sir. first story building in Nigeria is also located in Badagri. Wonderful. Then you have a palace, Salaf from your palace. Then on your fifth palace and several others like that. Then you have a lot of. You, you know, Obudu Katu Ranch, yeah. then a lot of other archaeological sites. We have the Idore you know, Hill. The Idore Hill is also there. We have the, the spring. The Sukor, we'll see warm spring. We'll see warm spring, the yeah. Sukor, you know, and several We have others. no excuse. So, several, There's many. so many places. So many places. And I so think another places. problem is because parents are now too busy. Because after working and staying in traffic for so long, mm. weekends where you're meant to take your children out on, you know, to um, mm. on um, for sightseeing, you want to sleep. But back in the day, we used to have excursions in it's, secondary it's, it's, school. It's still, it's still the function of economy. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the economic demand does not allow for rest in Nigeria. If you want to yeah. survive. Yeah. Very true. We, we, so we, we used to have excursions when we were growing up. Yeah. And that is a charge, not just to individuals, to schools as well. Please ensure that in your curriculum you insert as extracurricular activities, opportunities for children to visit these beautiful sites within Lagos, outside Lagos, so that they can learn about the diverse cultures. We have mm. over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria. They need to learn about these cultures. They will never learn enough. There's always something new to learn. That is our charge for you today. We've been speaking with Professor Suleiman Ajala, who is a professor from the Department of Professor of Cultural Anthropology in the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology in University of Ibadan. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Thank, thank you, sir. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.